Welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. Redemptorists, their friends and all of the devotees of Our Lady, how happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. As we perhaps alone in our homes, apartments, hospitals and nursing homes, Look upon this most familiar picture of our mother of perpetual help today. Let us bring our lives to her, remembering that we are not really alone. Joining us are millions of people who, like ourselves, are also devotees of our mother of perpetual help from around the world, including the Philippines, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, and Australia and many countries from the Southern Hemisphere of the Americas, including Mexico, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. In our Mother Church of St. Alphonsus in Rome, where the miraculous icon rests high above the main altar, and in all parts of Eastern and Western Europe, Ukraine and Russia, people are praying the same perpetual help devotions prayers in hundreds of different languages. In North America, people from New York, Boston, St. Louis, Seattle, New Orleans, people pray and sing God's praises through the perpetual novena. Here at home in Canada, more than 100 parishes across the country celebrate the devotions each week. And for more than 100 years, at St. Patrick's Church in downtown Toronto is a national shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Help. There, the novena is celebrated six times every Wednesday bringing together more than a thousand people from nations all around the globe to pray the devotions novena. Together, we join our songs and thoughts in meditation and in prayer, seeking her intercession for our daily needs, spiritual and material, for ourselves and for our loved ones. And we know her son listens to her. From that single soft young mother's voice, in a remote shepherd's town, to now all of our voices from around the whole world, the son who was hers and whom she gave to us listens as lovingly today as he did when laying in a manger. So whenever we look upon this beloved icon, we do so with confidence that we never pray alone. Our joined voices in the millions are one in mind and heart Together, we hold the whole world up to Our Lady, praying for the needs of all God's people. This is our family of prayer, the prayer of the world, making the perpetual novena the ongoing daily prayer of millions each week. Let our voices now become one of these. Sing of Mary, pure and lowly, Virgin Mother undefiled. Sing of God's own Son, most holy, who became her little child. God our Lord who 
was born in Ireland many, many years ago. In those days, it was customary for parents in the country to continue to live with their elderly parents in the family home and tend the farm. We live with my father's Victorian grandmother and her husband, my grandfather. We grew up close to nature and God. Our dependence on God for good weather, more rain if there was a drought, or sunshine to save the grain crops. The presence of God was acknowledged in regular conversation in those times. Many sentences were either prefaced by phrases like, if it is God's will, or I'll do that with the help of God, or please God. At that time, Ireland was dedicated to the Mother of God, and there was great devotion to Mary, to the recitation of the Angelus prayed morning, noon, and night. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Men working on the farm could be seen to stop, make the sign of the cross, and pray. Each evening after supper, when the farm chores were completed, we all got on our knees in the kitchen before a picture of our mother perpetual help. Our family and the workmen all joined in in saying the rosary before going home. Upon coming to Canada in the mid-60s, I was very fortunate to discover Our Lady of the Assumption Redemptress Church. From my first visit there for Midnight Mass in 1970, I was aware of the warmth of the welcome and down-to-earthedness of the Redemptorist brothers and priests who would joyfully greet each and every individual. I discovered the Redemptorist mission to perpetuate the Novena to our Mother of Perpetual Help and seeing the beautiful shrine and weekly devotions, I knew Our Lady had led me there. I knew I was so at home. Although the Redemptorists are no longer at Our Lady of the Assumption Parish, I am a permanent fixture at St. Patrick's Parish, the Shrine of Our Mother of Perpetual Help, the Redemptorist Parish where the same charism remains unchanged. I have learned through them the closeness and loving care of Jesus and his Mother for each of us. I now feel that I have a direct line to Jesus through his Mother and it never fails. For families who worry about their young or teenage children, I pass on my picture of our mother perpetual help with the memorari prayer on the reverse. And I remind them that Mary experienced many of our human problems and worries from the time that Jesus, then 12 years old, when he stayed behind in Jerusalem after the Passover celebrations and his parents returned to Nazareth, only to find that he was missing. They too had to go back anxiously to find him in the temple, speaking with the elders. As mothers who experience the ups and downs of our own family lives, we can find guidance and inspiration in Mary's life of dedication to her son, from birth to his death on the cross. May our mother of perpetual help continue to pray and guide each one of us. Mother of perpetual help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord. Obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call, and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. 
You delighted as your son heal the sick, intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health, and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your Son forgave sins. Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wound your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Recently, I was asked to officiate at a funeral for a relatively young man who had died of a drug overdose. When I sat down with the family to plan the service, I asked the parents about the boy. Amid many tears, they told the story of the birth of their son, the great joy that they had experienced all through his life as a child, and even into the challenging teenage years. The boy was greatly loved by his parents and his two sisters. But in his last year of high school, he had fallen in with some companions who introduced him to the world of illegal drugs. Rather quickly, the boy went from so-called soft drugs to the hard drugs of heroin, methamphetamines, and cocaine. He became totally addicted. He lived on the streets, looking only for his next fix. The family had found him numerous times, brought him home, and taken him to rehab centers, done everything they could to free him from the addiction. But he always relapsed. Indeed, when he was at home, it was as if they had lost their son. He stole items to sell, he was aggressive, especially to his mother. And then, one day, the police phoned to inform them that their son had died on the street from a drug overdose. What hit me in the conversation with this family was a phrase that surfaced numerous times. Father, they would say, we never stopped loving him. And we pray that when he died, he at least knew that. There are at least two profound lessons in this family's story. The first is the enslaving power, not just of addictions, but of sin. We may point fingers at addicts or alcoholics, but all of us have sins that enslave us. Mothers, for example, often shake their heads at their lack of patience. Internet pornography is ensnaring many young people, especially young men. Sarcasm, jealousy, anger, laziness, even hatred can infect our lives and 
most of us can readily think of those sins that we confess over and over again, wishing desperately that we could shake them from our daily life. We are enamored of something that we should not want or should not have. We begin to rationalize our actions, make them acceptable to ourselves. And then we hate the idea of having to face up to them, for example, in the confessional. So, so we live with them, even though we know that they control us rather than our controlling them. And then we can be desperately hard on ourselves because we do not change. Even St. Paul is one who recognized the enslaving power of sin. He says in his letter to the Romans, I do not understand my own behavior. I do not act as I mean to, but I do things I hate. The good thing I want to do, I never do. The evil thing which I do not want, that is what I do. But every time I do what I do not want to, then it is not myself acting, but the sin that lives in me. So now we come to the second lesson of this family that I mentioned at the beginning. We never stopped loving him, they say. Love did not seem to be enough to save the young boy, but it was always there for him to accept. He could not or would not trust in the healing power of love, in the support that was offered him, in the hope that the power of sin could be overcome. And now I ask you, if human parents can love a son so much, right to the point of tremendous self-sacrifice, how much more do you think that God our Father loves us now and forever and always? God is love. God can do no other than love us. And in this love for us, the first and most necessary gift to us is mercy. God is saying to us, I am here to take away your sins. They are like the fog that dissipates before the morning sun. Do not let your sins and failures cloud your vision. See the love that can do no other. My arms are open wide to receive you. Trust me. Trust me. And that is the message of Jesus, that the Father's love will never fail, can never fail. So let me conclude with a question for you to ponder. Do you suppose that the love and sacrifices of this boy's family saved the boy? In other words, when he stood before Almighty God to give an account of his life, and he shamefacedly acknowledged his utter selfishness and failure, do you suppose that the love of his parents and his sisters would bring him God's mercy? Before you answer those questions, I want you to think about a father who sent his son into the world to preach the kingdom of God's love, to reveal the mercy of God, and to invite us to live in the light of this love. Do you suppose that the love and the paschal sacrifice of Jesus is enough to bring divine mercy to all human beings? If, as Pope Francis repeatedly tells us, the name of God is mercy, then Jesus, the Word of God made visible, is the hope of all sinners, and that means all of us. Thank you.
Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need. We pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands, a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families unity and strength, and peace and blessing on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors, and courage to witness to their faith, to our elderly vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed, grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased, and a place in the communion of the saints where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters and brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs, especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us, and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us and allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments, and Catholic schools as together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of our people. Please help us if you can make your check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to our websites www.redemptrists.ca or www.redemptrist.tv and make use of the PayPal link 
we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we redemptors offer a special mass of thanksgiving to God in honor of our mother of perpetual help for all of your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on the TV devotions, write to us at the address on your screen. So now following along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, of perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Devotions TV in this new age of mercy, produced by the Redemptorists of Canada on national TV every week since 1995. Now you can find this week's program streaming live every week on Redemptorist TV and many more special features. Please join us on Redemptorist TV. Tell your friends, help us celebrate. Our program is made possible by you, the viewers, and our mother of perpetual help.